Blessed day, everyone. Here we are again to discuss the continuation of our lesson on the subject lie detection techniques. So, uh, for the disclaimer, all information that will be disclosed and shown are for general education purposes only. I have no intention to claim nor to own it. So credits to all authors and owners. So previously, we discussed lesson one. This time, we proceed for the lesson two, which is about lie detection and psychophysiology. What is psychology? Psychology is the study of mind, its thought, feeling, and behavior. It encompasses the biological influences, social pressures, and environmental factors that affect how people think, act, and feel. So learning psychology makes it easier to understand how humans think and behave while communicating with others that even it will help the person to think what is the best approach to deal them. When you know that a person is sad, angry, and depressed, of course, we know the possible consequences when we provoke them. Thus, learning psychology help us, helps us to formulate best approach to communicate to them. On the other hand, the physiology is the study of how the human body works. It describes the chemistry and physics behind basic body functions, from how molecules behave in cells to how systems of organs work together. It helps us understand what happens in a healthy body in everyday life and what goes wrong when someone gets sick. For instance, psychologists or physiologists rather have figured out how different types of cells in the pancreas release hormones to control blood sugar levels. Another example, it will help the doctors understand and treat diabetes. So, physiology includes the uh, cardiovascular system, such as your heart and blood vessels, your digestive, uh, digestive system, your stomach, intestines, and other organs that digest food. And we have also here the um, endocrine system that includes glands that makes hormones, chemicals that controls many body functions. So when these two are combined, this psychology and physiology, as it has, in, has interrelationship between mind and behavior, the way in which the mind and body interact, it termed as psychophysiology. Okay, let us um, talk about more psychophysiology. The field of psychophysiology is focused on studying the functions of human nervous system and the bodily reactions of a person as influenced by his mental responses to specific stimulus. In simpler words, it is a field of science dealing with the relationship between psychology and physiology as it was later mention. Psychophysiology is the branch of physiology that is concerned with the relationship between mental, your psyche, and the physical process, uh, processes, which is your physiological. So what is the relation of psychophysiology with the line detection? Now, what do you see when a person who is under investigation, who is at the state of anxiety or fear, which he really doesn't want 
the investigators to know the truth. Otherwise, he will be charged with a crime and a possibility that he or she will be convicted. In short, when a person who suddenly encounters an expected event or he or she was caught by surprise, his or her internal stimulus or reactions from him or her will change. Now, since lie detection is based on the assumption that when an individual experiences apprehension, fear, or emotional excitement, his or her respiration rate, blood pressure, and galvanic resistance, which is the uh, physiochemical uh, response to emotional arousal, which increases uh, sympathetic nervous system activity sharply increase. You might already experience this, that when you have when you had done something wrong, you don't want your parents nor your teachers to know about the truth. You will, uh, when they ask you something, questions that could be either relevant or irrelevant, especially even it is irrelevant, since you are hiding something, you will feel uh, anxiety or even fear or even tension because that question might link to what you have done wrong. Okay, so as it was later mentioned, psychophysiology is concerned with understanding the interrelations between the mind, body, and behavior. So, so um, psychophysiology is a term to describe the body's physiology reaction to perceive stressors suggesting that the stress response is a mind-body phenomena. It involves the recording of autonomic nervous system in indices such as your respiratory, electrodermal, which is also known as galvanoskin resistance, cardiovascular, which relates to your heart and blood vessels, and the um, vasomotor activity, which shows the causing or relating to the constriction or dilation of blood vessels or getting smaller and bigger while the subject is asked of series of questions about which his or her credibility is being evaluated nor his or her responses is being evaluated. As I mentioned to you, when someone is hiding pertaining, uh, some, uh, hiding something pertaining of what he has done, or what she has done wrong, there are actually internal responses that is occurring within your body. It may be it, uh, in, it increases or it generates or decreases the stimulus. Oftentimes, nervousness is the um, psychological reaction used as system of deception. However, nervousness per se cannot be measured. Like when a person is extremely nervous when he was asked with, an, uh, with a uh, relevant questions, we cannot tell how nervous he or she is or will that actually measure to say that he or she is deceptive. What if he or she is a uh, shy type person or he or she is afraid to talk when he is under hot seat. Thus, it will not a solely basis to give a conclusion about determination of his truthfulness. What we can actually measure are the bodily reactions such as the sudden change in heart rate and as well as the breathing of a person. Just when a person is a guilty perhaps that might uh, generate the heartbeat of that person or even there might be a deep breathing session of that person. So, we may say that a person is deceptive if we detected that his pulse and respiration suddenly increased 
but such conclusion is disputable unless we trace the cause of significant changes in physiological reactions. When something changes, we must not conclude immediately without any other verification. Our deduction is positive if we identified that the cause is anxiety or similar stress reactions that are psychological in nature. Or we can say or close in our mind that the reason why the uh, uh, beating me increased or suddenly changed is just because he's not a uh, kind of a person who is exposed to mingle with other people or perhaps he's afraid to talk with another people or perhaps he's afraid of what may happen when there is something he or she can uh, give may resulted to a malfunction or there might be a possibility that the machine may have a uh, or may produce a wrongful a wrong result so there are actually a uh, what do you call the scenario different scenarios why people may feel nervous like i said we should not or we must not conclude immediately so hence there is direct relationship between human physiology and psychology that is functional in explaining the theory of lie detections that the, that is the reason why psychophysiology has a relation with the lie detection let us move forward to the anatomy and physiology of human nervous system the, no, the uh, central nervous system processes and coordinates all incoming sensory information and outgoing motor commands it is responsible for integrating sensory information and responding accordingly it consists of two main components the spinal cord serves as a conduit for signals between the brain and the rest of the body it also controls simple musculoskeletal reflexes without input from the brain as i all as uh, earlier mentioned this consists of brain and the spinal cord the brain is the center of our thoughts the interpreter of our external environment and the origin of control over body movement brain plays a vital role to what information that will be transmitted what we are going to say what are we going to do and what are we going to act the central nervous system as the seat of complex brain functions such as memory intelligence and learning and emotion the human brain is one of the most complex system on earth every component of the brain must work together in order to keep its body functioning think or try to imagine when someone has no brain do you think that person has the discernment to do something he wants or she wants when the person has no spinal cord do you think that person acts what his or her brains want him or her to say or to do the brain and the spinal cord make up the central nervous system which alongside the peripheral nervous system is responsible for regulating all bodily functions let me give you an overview what does peripheral nervous system do peripheral nervous system can connect the central nervous system to the organs limbs and a skin it allows the brain and the spinal cord to receive and send information to other areas of the body 
It also carries sensory and motor information to and from the central nervous system, and it regulates involuntary, involuntary body functions like heartbeat and breathing. So these are only the of these are the functions what can a peripheral nervous system can do. Please remember all what I just mentioned. Central nervous system is made up of the brain and a spinal cord as it shown to the to the presentation the brain controls most body functions including awareness movements sensations thoughts speech and memory the spinal cord is connected to the brain at the brainstem and is covered by the uh, vertebrae of the spine the uh, spinal cord carries signals back and forth between the brain and the nerves and the rest of the body. So in short, the uh, spinal cord bridges the information that is being transmitted towards the brain and what is being transmitted from the brain. While the uh, peripheral nervous system includes all neural tissue outside the central nervous system. It is responsible for providing sensory, which is the afferent, information into the, into the central nervous system and carrying motor, which is the efferent, commands out to the body tissues. It is the part of the nervous system outside of the central nervous system. It is made up of nerves and uh, ganglia that send signals to and receive signals from the central nervous system so like for example our feet what our feet can feel may also transmitted through the spinal cord and goes toward to the brain of course it's just like also in lightning how the uh, this information r runs okay as you switch the light it will illuminate the light okay as we as you turn off then the light will suddenly perish or will uh, suddenly turn off before we proceed further let us know first what is meant by nervous system nervous system is a complex combination of cells whose primary function is to allow an organism to gain information about what is going on inside and outside the body and to respond appropriately it is the major controlling regulatory and communicating system in the body it is the center of all mental activity including thought learning and memory why do you think why do you speak why do you must think the answer before you write the answer why you must calculate first in your mind before put them or reduce them into writing how can we memorize how can we speak why we act what our brains want is just because of the functions of the nervous system there are basic or three basic functions of nervous system first is the it receive information or input it talks about what we feel what we see what we hear what you smell and what we touch of course that is the gathering of information that is the processing uh, receiving of information as i mentioned and then once you receive the information there will of course a process a process that will incur that is the integrating or processing that information we can figure the shape and size of a certain objects by calculating its thickness and measurements we can perceive 
that the object is smooth by feeling the object. We can say something on an object after observation. We speak based on what we see. We speak based on what we observe. We speak based on what we heard. So it goes or derives from the information before we say something. Of course, in the processing includes only the uh, scrutinizing or examining about the object, about the information. Let's say, for example, when someone who said or who, when someone told you, do you want to date with me? So that is the statement that you heard from her. Do you want to date with me? So there might be a perception that that girl might want wants you uh, that girl wants you to be a friend or to become a boyfriend or just a uh, like I said a friendly date so you need to scrutinize that statement what the girl has just mentioned because the third one is the guiding actions or output so when the information is processed of course that information goes to your brain it processes the information because there is a processor of our brain so the uh, information will be processed will be examined will be scrutinized until such time the brain will now give a, a directives or even a final output as i mentioned it is a guiding actions or output after it goes to our brain, the information transmitted, the brain will transmit us, uh, will transmit its feedback that will flow to the nerve cells or to your spinal cords that will, that enable the part of the body to function. We cannot measure how fast our information being transmitted that goes and uh, goes towards the brain and goes. Uh, that uh, sends information from the brain okay as you touch let's say for example may I ask you to touch your table and try to feel its smoothness and when you feel it is rough then you can tell someone it's rough so how imagine how fast our information is being transmitted okay so your brain thinks what you're going to do what you're going to say after the information has undergone to the processor processor of your brain so, um, we have the terms that we must know what is meant by nerve cells it is also known as neurons it send and receives signals from your brain while neurons have a lot in common with other types of cells they're structurally and functionally unique a specialized projections called actions allow neurons to transmit electrical and chemical signals to other cells we have here in the uh, cells body here it is the central part of the neuron which contains the nucleus. The nucleus is the defense area within the cell body which contains structures necessary to the life and development of the neuron. The cell body integrates information from the dendrites and other synaptic inputs in determining the messages to be transmitted to other cells through its actions again where this information coming from the information is coming from the dendrites while dendrites these are small extensions on the cell body 
that receive messages from other neurons and carry towards the cell body. While actions are relatively elongated part of a neuron that carry messages away from the cell body. Then right says receive messages from other neurons. While action says carry messages away from the cell body. So what is the distinction between dendrites and actions? Actions and dendrites are the two important parts of nerve cells involved in the conduction of nerve impulses. However, dendrites receives dendrite receives messages or information or electrochemical impulses from the external environment or other neurons so they work as the input for the neuron. While the role of the action is to send messages or any information or electrochemical impulses to the external environment or other neurons, so they are the output for the neuron. Again, the dendrites is the input for the neuron, while the action is the output for the neuron. So what is peripheral nervous system? It is divided into the somatic nervous system and then the autonomic nervous system. The somatic nervous system controls body movements that are under our control such as walking while the autonomic nervous system it controls involuntarily involuntary functions that the body does on its own such as breathing and digestions so in what ways are the autonomic and somatic nervous systems different the somatic nervous system transmits sensory and motor signals to and from the central nervous system. Okay. Then the autonomic nervous system controls the functions of our organs and glands and it can be divided into the uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic. So you can see here to our uh, illustration somatic controls skeletal strip or st stressed muscles while the autonomic it controls smooth muscles the heart and the glands. Moving further, somatic nervous system consists of two parts. First is the spinal nerve and the cranial nerve because these, are, these two play a vital role in the somatic. So spinal nerves are peripheral nerves that carry sensory information into and motor commands out of the spinal Cord, while the cranial nerves, they are the nerve fibers that carry information into and out of the brain stem. Again, the spinal nerves commands out of the spinal cord, while cranial, where we can find the brain, it is out the uh, carry information into and out of the brain system because the information goes in and goes out from the brain. Now, I have here a question. Is breathing considered automatic or not automatic? 
The control of breathing is an automatic process that works without conscious intervention when asleep, anesthetized, or awake and not specifically thinking about breathing. Because when you are sleeping, can you control your breath? If you want to control your breath uh, the whole night, of course, you might lose uh, weight, you might uh, lose um, strength because you don't have enough uh, sleep. So again, the control of breathing is on automatic process. Yet, you can control it in a sense that when you are awake, it is automatic when it is uh, when you are sleeping. The autonomic nervous system is further divided into the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system prepares the body for situations that require strength and heighten awareness or situations that arouse fear, anger, excitement, or embarrassment. This is called the fight or flight response or the fight or flight mechanism. It causes the heart to beat faster, makes you breathe quicker, and more shallowly dilates the pupils and increases metabolism. While the parasympathetic nervous system has a calming effect on the body, which is the rest and response system. It returns heart rate and breathing to normal, constricts the pupils and slows down metabolism to conserve energy. As you can see to our image attached, sympathetics, brain activity increased, metabolic rate increased, it delays pupil, inhibits flow of saliva, accelerates heartbeat, deletes bronchi, inhibits crystallisis and uh, secretion, conversion of uh, glycogen to glucose, secretion of adrenaline and noradrenaline, inhibits bladder contraction, stimulates orgasm ejaculations. While the parasympathetic brain activity decreased, metabolic rate decreased, stimulates flow of saliva, flows, uh, slows heartbeat, constrict uh, bronchi, stimulates peristalsis uh, and secretion, stimulates release of bile, contracts bladder, stimulates sexual arousal, ejections of genitals. So as you can see, the parasympathetic most likely it, uh, decreases where it really makes the person needs to rest or it requires the person to take a rest. So when a person is, is has the energy or have conserved energy, of course the, pers the blood or we can say the immune system of that person uh, is alive or perhaps we can uh, say that the person is very energetic so that could be a, a classification of a fight or flight response okay so when a person plays when a person plays a basketball of course there is a subject there is the exertion of energy or it gives off energy of course we expect that the uh, it will increase the heartbeat of a person. It will make the person to breathe quicker. When the person is already exhausted, the person requires him to take a rest. Then he belongs to the parasympathetic. Okay, so that is why um, it is a, uh, a rest response. Okay. So um, basically, the uh, parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for the body's rest, 
digestion response when the body is relaxed, resting, or feeding. It is a, um, and thus the work of sympathetic division after a stressful situation. As, um, will I, as I will uh, I will relate this to the example that I just mentioned when the per person is already exhausted in playing basketball, of course the person uh, needs to take a rest to conserve energy or uh, I mean to recharge, maybe that, it, that is the correct term, or will uh, gain energy. So, parasympathetic nervous system also, it decreases respiration as it was mentioned, and the heart, likewise the heart rate, however, the digestion will increase. Okay? The digestion will increase. Of course, when a person is exhausted because you exerted efforts and energy, you expect that you might be hunger. Uh, you might be hungry. So, you really want to have a merienda or to take your lunch or to eat your food to gain um, energy. In this slide, you can see the overall view of our nervous system. Under the nervous system, we have the central nervous system and then the peripheral nervous system. Central service, uh, nervous system is made up of the brain and the spinal cord. The brain receives and pro processes sensory information, initiates responses, stores memory, generates thoughts and emotions. So as I earlier mentioned, every component of the brain must work together in order to keep its body functioning. And we have the spinal cord that conducts signals to and from the brain controls reflex activities, which another word is the spinal cord is the bridge that bridges the information that goes in and goes out from the brain. Under the peripheral nervous system, we have also the motor neurons and sensory neurons, but we focus on the motor neurons which uh, depicts the central nervous system to muscles and glands. glands. Under the motor neurons, we have the somatic nervous system, controls voluntary movements, while the autonomic nervous system controls involuntary responses. That under the autonomic nervous system, we have the sympathetic division, which is the fight or flight where the person is aggressively Energy, aggressive, energy, energetic, and parasympathetic division when a person is already exhausted or uh, when a person undoes the division of the sympathetic, the person will now take the rest, which is the rest or digest. So, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs 3 verse 5. God bless everyone.